1979 revolution was a tragedy of epic proportions for the Iranian people. After Khomeini and his regime established their stronghold on the country, the weaponizing of Islamic rule became commonplace. Iran consistently ranks among the worst in the world when it comes to poverty, drug addiction, mental illness, suicide, and brain drain. Clearly, the current regime has devastated Iran's environment, economy, and people. In 2022, Iranian resistance has emerged for what seems to be the final showdown. The current revolution was ignited by the murder of 22-year-old Masa Amini at the hands of the infamous morality police. Regardless of their cultural or religious backgrounds, all Iranians have a single objective, regime change. However, the survival of the modern revolution will face several challenges. In the realm of foreign policy, the Iranian regime has been strategically working on four fronts. False claims of democracy. They falsely claim that the regime is a representative democracy supported by the majority of the population. Strategic diplomacy and negotiations. They negotiate with the US and Western nations to guarantee international silence about their political oppression and human rights abuses. Selective cooperation. They persuade the US and Western leaders to actually cooperate with Khamenei's regime for the sake of supposed regional stability and the fight against terrorism. Demanding non-interference. They push the false narrative that the US and the EU should not side with the Iranian people because doing so will jeopardize peace in the region. Over the past two decades, the U.S. government has been infiltrated by pro-Islamic Republic policy experts in key positions, such as President Obama's senior advisor for Iran and the nuclear negotiations. These advisors have consistently advocated for a policy of appeasement and cooperation with the regime in Iran. Recently, President Obama revealed the extent to which the American government has been influenced by these strategies. In an interview about the 2009 Green Movement, he confessed about controversies at the White House about whether to officially express support for the Iranian uprising. His advisors encouraged him to prioritize the nuclear deal, therefore ensuring Khamenei's survival at a critical moment in his rule. In the end, the Obama administration remained silent. Pro-regime lobbyists across the U.S. and Europe are at work to fragment the unprecedented unity among Iranians, both in the country and in the global diaspora. These agents have five main strategies to damage the modern revolution. Leverage fears of Islamophobia. They spread fears that the anti-regime protests are attacking Islam itself, rather than the corruption of the clergy and the tyrannical theocratic government. Distract from the real goal. They hyperfocus on the feminist elements of the protests, which reduces the people's revolution to a simple women's rights issue. While women's rights are extremely important, this focus hinders the movement's unity under the ultimate goal of regime change. Divide the movement. They overemphasize individual social causes within the movement, such as LGBTQ groups. This inaccurately casts the revolution as a progressive social campaign, and it actually scares Iranians about losing their children to Western culture if the regime falls. Undermine the revolution. They portray the movement as disunified and unorganized with the intention to discredit and derail the movement. Instill doubt. They push the narrative that the Iranian nation is better off with the Islamic regime because if it finally falls, it could become another Afghanistan run by the likes of ISIS or Taliban, or perhaps it will embrace promiscuous Western culture and abandon traditional values. The strategies of the Islamic regime are not invincible. It is crucial that the US and Western nations intentionally resist its influence on their media and, and policy-making process. This will require completely cutting off the Islamic regime economically and diplomatically. Economically, we must sanction and freeze the assets of members of the Islamic regime and their families in the diaspora. We must dismantle the Islamic regime's funding of terrorist groups across the Middle East. We must enforce severe sanctions on Iran's key industries with the aim to cripple its banking and financial systems. Diplomatically, we must expel the Islamic regime's diplomats and personnel from the U.S. and Western nations. Embassies should be closed in both Iran and the West. 
We must deport the children and families of regime leaders who live in the West, enjoying the benefits of democracy and human rights, while regime leaders brutalize their people back in Iran. Ultimately, the Iranian people must be free to vote for their own leaders and be guaranteed their human rights. To do this, the West must stand up to the oppressive regime and its agents around the world. Will you stand up for the people of Iran?